Thank you very much and for the invitation and uh, the introduction. Yeah, so difficult presentation, right? What should I show you that you've not seen and could inspire you for your three, four year journey ahead? Yes, thank you. So you already heard this. Um, and back in 2007, 2008, we had no data on the burden of antimicrobial resistance. And we were just looking at the EU at the time. So we published in 2009 the first estimates and then we decided um, in 2022 there was the time to update those estimates and that's what you hear now. More than 800,000 uh, people in the EU suffer an infection with antibiotic resistant bacteria, and these are the one that we're interested in are the multi-drug resistant, the one that are a bit more difficult to treat. The consequence is that more than 35,000 people die as a direct consequence of this infection. More than one and what more than one million years of life are lost because of premature death or disability. And when you look at all this burden, keep in mind more than 70% is actually associated with healthcare, the rest being community infections. So this is really where our problem is, at least for the EU. The burden, and this was already said, remains compar comparable to that of influenza, tuberculosis, and HIV AIDS combined for the EU. Increased between 2016 and 2020, and there was a small decrease in uh, 2020 as compared to 2019, and there have been discussions about how did the COVID-19 pandemic influence not only uh, antibody consumption, but also infections in different settings, and that's what we found. Now, the burden varies a lot depending on the, on the countries in EU. Keep on the left side, you have the disability-adjusted life years. On the right side, the death that are directly attributable to the infection, and each bar represents a country. Keep in mind that these are controlled for the size of the population in the country. So a large bar does not mean that you have a lot of people, therefore a lot of infections in the country. And this reflects also what we know about the prevalence of, of resistant bacteria. On 13th of June uh, last year, the EU Ministers of Health adopted a Council recommendation on stepping up EU actions uh, to combat antimicrobial resistance in a One Health approach. And for the first time, the EU ministers adopted targets, reduction targets in terms of antibody consumption in human health that should be achieved, for example, for this one, by 2030, and the reduction target is minus 20% in antibody consumption. So that gave us a responsibility at the CDC, and we need to adjust our surveillance system and make sure that we actually regularly each year produced an update on how the EU overall and how each EU member state is progressing towards achieving the target. So here again, total antibody consumption in humans, our baseline year was a 2019 reduction of minus 20%, and you see that by 2022, there was only a minus 2.5 reduction. So the EU is progressing towards the target in antibody consumption, but relatively slowly when we compare this to uh, animal health when the reductions are uh, much larger. On the right side of the, of the slide, you have the progress or the regression of some countries. So in some countries indicated in red, there was no reduction. There was actually an increase in antibody consumption in 2022 as compared to baseline year 2019. Not surprisingly, and I wanted to show this again, the higher the consumption of antibiotic in the country 
and these are the x-axis on this graph, the higher the percentage of infections that will be resistant to the same antibiotics. We were showing these slides 20 years ago. This is still valid now. The levels of antibiotic consumption are probably a bit lower, but the association is still valid. On the left, total consumption of macrolides and similar antibiotics, and the percent of streptococcus pneumoniae uh, infection that would be resistant to macrolide. And then on the right, the total consumption, the total consumption of third generation cephalosporins in humans and the percentage of E. coli infection that would be resistant to third generation cephalosporins. And I could do this for all sorts of uh, combination. That's why we're doing this. That's why we're so interested in antibiotic consumption. Another indicator is a reduction of 5%, very reasonable, minus 5% by 2030 of the incidence of bloodstream infections due to carbapenem resistant Klebsiella pneumonia. And we're really concerned. To our surprise, in 2022, there has been almost a plus 50% increase. It means the EU overall and most of the, the EU member states are actually going against the target, indicating the urgency to address uh, Klebsiella pneumonia that are resistant to carbapenems. It's always difficult to, we, we, all, we all talk about antimicrobial resistance or even AMR, and it's difficult to put a face, especially to, to the non-specialists about what we're talking about. And at ECDC, and I put the link here, we're trying to identify through specialists like you, patients that would be willing to tell their story about how it has been to, to have an infection with multidrug resistant bacteria. And last year, we were uh, happy and we thank uh, Arity from, from Greece, who was able to, to report to us. Uh, when she was 13 years old, she suffered uh, leukemia and she had to receive chemotherapy, but she developed an infection with a carbapenem resistant cluster pneumonia. So not only she needed to receive treatment for this infection, but her cancer chemotherapy had to be stopped, put on hold for a while until her infection was successfully treated and then the chemotherapy could be uh, resumed and then she was, uh, she was cured, she was cured from her cancer and 12 years later, she is alive, healthy and, and working as a pharmacist in, in Greece. The antibody that she received most likely 12 years ago was colistin with the, the toxicity that we know of this antibody. So we went to our data from another uh, surveillance system at ECDC, ESACnet, and we tried to find out if we could have an idea of if there an increase of the use of new antibiotics, because 12 years later, a patient like RIT would probably have received an, a, one of the newer antibody combinations that, that we have available in the EU. So on the left, this is the number of defined daily doses without a denominator that are reported to us each year for this group of antibiotics that, have, that are new and have an activity against anti-gram negative bacteria. And you see that we're about at 300,000, 400,000 defined daily doses. For the monobactams, this is mostly astreonam. It's about the same level. There's been an increase, but it's plateauing now. Now, and this is exactly the same scale for the, the x-axis, at the same time, we have now about four million defined daily doses of colistin that are still used. So 10 times, we're still using 10 times more of polymyxins, mostly colistin, that we're using of the new uh, anti-gram negative uh, antibiotics. We wanted to do this for the anti-gram positives, so if you take the new, uh, sorry, the anti-gram positive antibiotics that includes the oxazolidinol, sorry, linezolin and tenizolin, and then um, a few other antibiotics, we are at about a seven million defined daily doses. And if we look at the other uh, anti antibiotics in this reserve antibiotics group, 
that include uh, some tetracyclines and like, and then we are, again, at 10 times more, 40 million defined daily doses. So I'll, I know you have a work package about access to new antibiotics, and I thought it would be good data to, to show you and for, for reflection. We're always talking about surveillance. Well, at DCDC, we do case-based surveillance, and that's the incidence data, the data from EARSnet that I, sh I showed you for antimicrobial resistance. But we also do event-based surveillance. When there is an event, when there's a country like Ur Ireland that posts an urgent inquiry about hypervirulent carbapenem resistant Klebsiella pneumoniae at the time, then we work and we try to work as rapidly as we can after the urgent inquiry to develop what we call a rapid risk assessment. Now it happens that Ireland has new data and based on this, later this week, we'll produce an update on the rapid risk assessment. Obviously, these hypervirulent carbapenem resistant Klebsiella pneumoniae are spreading in healthcare in more countries and the number of cases is increasing. So please ch check, check our website that should be published uh, later this week. What can you expect from ECDC over the year? Uh, I mentioned the update of the indicators. I mentioned uh, the rapid risk assessment. Probably next week, we'll have the fourth joint report of ECDC the European Food Safety Authority, uh, Authority uh, EFSA, and the European Medicines Agency, EMA, on the analysis of the antimicrobial consumption surveillance data and antimicrobial resistance data in a One Health perspective. On 5th of May, there will be the report of the third point prevalence survey of healthcare associated infections and antimicrobial use in acute care hospitals. Many of you obviously contributed to data for this uh, point prevalence survey. On 6th and 8th of May in Brussels, there's a joint meeting organized by ECDC and the Healthcare Associated Infection uh, Surveillance Network, HiNet, and Sian Sano under the EU uh, presidency led by Belgium. 18th of November is our usual European Antibiotic Awareness Day in partnership with World Antimicrobial Awareness Week, where we will release the updates on the progress of the EU and the member states on the indicator, as well as a joint summary of data for the whole European region together with our colleagues from WHO Europe. And we plan to also have an in-depth analysis of the data from the point prevalence survey on the correlation between antimicrobial resistance and the structures and the processes that the acute care hospitals in the EU are putting in place. In other words, does more a higher use of alcohol hand rub means less health gas infections with antimicrobial resistance? Is a percentage of single rooms, a, a higher percentage of single rooms results in less infections with antimicrobial resistance? All this will be published for 18th of November. In December, we will have the report of a, also an interagency work, EFSA, ECA, ECDC, EEA, the Environmental Agency, and the Joint Research Center reply to a request from the European Commission to produce a scientific report on the impact of the use of azole fungicides other than as human medicine on the development of resistant, as all resistant aspergillus infections in humans. And then in 2025, we'll have the companion report on the point prevalence survey of health care associated infection and antimicrobial use, but then in long-term care facilities in, in Europe. Thank you for your attention.